K's is not new school. It basically looks like a K tattoo that she threw two extra colors in. I'm super happy with how bright it is and how clean it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like half in the color. They're so far off from new school. We've all heard the saying, picture paints a thousand words. Today, the elimination tattoo will do just the same. You'll be using all of your precision skills to create a photorealistic tattoo. Photorealism is probably the toughest thing to do in tattooing. You just have to look at a picture and duplicate it on the skin. Your design will need to look like an actual photo. That means it must have three-dimensional qualities. My client today wants to do a tattoo revealing the inner workings of the body beneath the arm and the collarbone. You want to do some like photoreal like sutures? No, no. This is all the things you could put in there. You could put the bones, the veins, tendons, ligaments. Mm -hmm. He's not really flexible. He definitely doesn't want to allow me to approach this in the most realistic fashion. The only thing I'm concerned about is the skin. If it's just an incision, it's not going to give us photoreal bloody stuff. I don't want dripping blood like it's from the movie from Hellraiser. I am a little stressed right now. I'm getting these clients that aren't the easiest to work with. I could be in for a storm. There is a possibility that they could send me home on this. There aren't too many shots that really show what he wants without all the blood and gore. It's been tough piecing them together, but I have a really good plan. This is what people come to me for. I specialize in photorealism. And even when I'm doing stuff that's completely made up and you know from my own head or from the client's head, I apply a realistic touch to it. All right, you can sit down. My client, he's giving me a list of fruits and veggies that he wants. You can do so many things with fruit and food as far as making it look real. It's going to be a little bit more of an advantage for me. The big thing with photorealism is tricking the eye. You may have a subject that's not realistic, but if you can make the eye perceive that it's actually there and not a flat picture on the skin, then you've achieved your goal. OK, in five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. Time's up. Put your machines down. No more ink. I think that although it's not a realistic subject, I nailed it when it came to getting it accurate and realistic looking. This week, we tested your technical precision skills. Now it's time to see how you did with photorealistic tattoos. Josh, you're up first. How do you feel about this? I like it. He was a great client, gave me a lot of artistic freedom. It was fun. My complaint is this tattoo looks more like a pop art painting, artistically illustrated, other than photorealistic. Proportionately, I think that the avocado seed looks really large in proportion to the rest of the piece. That strawberry is about the size of that avocado. That blueberry is enormous. They're not really proportioned with one another. In order to put good detail in it, I wanted to make each fruit larger so that I could make it more realistic. That's not necessarily realistic. Billy. Does it feel like an illustration? Yes. I think the arteries or the veins look a little bit like tendrils, almost like fantastic, which kind of makes me feel that it's, it has more of like a horror sci-fi kind of vibe. He wanted to avoid doing torn skin. He wanted to avoid stitches. He wanted to avoid anything that I could use to make it that much more realistic. I'm not really blown away by it. Really, have you achieved the goal of the challenge and make something that's photorealistic? No, I don't really believe so. I tried to accommodate him as much as I could in a way that I thought, you know, I could give this guy a good tattoo. I just don't think this tattoo falls into the category of photorealism. Tonight, we judge your technical precision skills with a photorealistic tattoo. Unfortunately for one of you, this will be your last night here. Josh. Do you feel you deserve to be here right now? Well, I guess it depends on what you're going to tell me. I thought that it looked like a really, really nice oil painting, but didn't capture a photorealistic sense of what the challenge asked for. I think I did a good, clean, realistic tattoo. I don't think that anybody can say that the strawberry doesn't look like a strawberry. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the proportions and everything to make it photorealistic. So you would do a strawberry that little on a hand and leave the rest of it just... Maybe three. Maybe some grouped over each other to make it a little more interesting. If we took a photograph 
that wouldn't be the way the photograph would be, and it was based on photorealism. It just didn't hit the mark. Billy, why do you think you're here? It's an organic piece. I think that's why I'm up here. It's definitely a different take than what I would expect. I was expecting something a little bit more clinical and medical. You know, it's made up realism, but I still tried to incorporate that into the realism by, you know, adding the cast shadows and drop shadows to, you know, to give it depth. In terms of what the challenge was, photorealism, I just think it, it missed its mark. It's the card I was dealt. All of you are here because you think you have what it takes to be the next Ink Master. But if you want to compete for the title, you're going to have to prove it first. There are 30 of you, but there's only room for 18 artists in this competition. 12 people are being eliminated right off the bat? We're not screwing around here. You're going to have five hours to do as many small American traditional tattoos as you can. If you do not have the basics and the fundamentals down, you do not deserve to be here. My butt is clenched. It is time to critique your work. Kelly. Slick tattoo, flawless execution, not even near American traditional. If this was the last tattoo, going for the win, you lose. This isn't do your own thing, master. This was also the challenge that I was the most scared for. Please go by definition of what it is that you're asked to do, or you will be a good tattooer that leaves, and somebody not as good will stay because they follow directions. A lot of people got to go. Congratulations on making it through the first tattoo. For this next tattoo, Chris is calling the shots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your live models. Today, I'm looking for you guys to create beautiful geishas. You're going to be using these models and these models only as your reference. Their kimonos are adorned with things that were royalty for kings. You will have six hours to do it. Wow. And since this is Chris's specialty, if he doesn't like what he sees, he will send you home on the spot. You've each been randomly assigned a canvas. And your time starts now. All I give a shit about is the quality of work that they deliver. And if I see people that are talented, obviously that's who I want. Countdown to getting yelled at. I did not meet the American traditional challenge, and through some merciful grace, I am still in this competition. Kelly is doing her own thing. Other than the hair do, yeah. there's the only thing that says geisha. It's like all these people, everybody does their one thing. It's all fine and dandy when you're at home. Yeah, this isn't home, that's for sure. The ability to do a mass execution is liberating for us. If you don't want to listen, it's your fast pass. Get the f out. Time to critique your work. Let's start with Kelly. You do beautiful tattoos. They're slick, but completely not Japanese. It's not feed me your style. It's feed me the fact that you can do all styles. All right, guys, bring it in. This is what you've been battling it out for. One of these 18 shops. Team scared the out of me because I am a lone wolf, not a team player. You guys ready to choose the first half of your teams? Miss Kelly Dottie. Kelly's an amazing artist. Even though I didn't like what she showed me the entire two days of this whole competition, I know exactly what we're looking for. If they listen, I can give them the keys to the kingdom. There are two challenges so far where Kelly specifically did not follow directions. Maybe I should have just said, hey, F everybody. Today, you must tattoo whatever your canvas wants in some of the most difficult places. Oh, no. From heads and necks to armpits and butts, it will take creativity to design a tattoo that fits the body part perfectly. I don't want to touch a butt. Let's meet your canvases. It's one thing when canvases want a crazy idea, but when they want a crazy idea on a crazy body part, that makes it twice as hard. Black and gray, Japanese-style frog on my butt. You don't realize how much that ass hurts. Today, our artists are going to be challenged on placement. What do you think, just dead smack right here? Oh, yeah. Inexperience makes different locations on the body harder to tattoo than others. I don't even think the knee's that bad. I got everything tattooed. You don't have your dick got tattooed, though. I got feet tattooed. Huh? I got my balls tattooed. <laughs> First line, it's like, oh my god, what am I doing? If you are not used to tattooing an armpit or not used to tattooing a butt cheek, 
and you don't know how to stretch the skin, how to place your canvas, you will have a hard time in these tattoos. I like this design a lot, dude. Don't blow up my head, Christian. <laughs> I've been at the bottom a lot. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to make this tattoo really stand out. Just have fun with it, man. Yeah. You've been waiting for this. Yeah, I have. My canvas has some stretch marks on his butt. When you're pulling your line and you run over a stretch mark, it almost shifts your liner. This can screw everything up. I have a tattoo right here. Yeah. That's not my ass. I mean, I can honestly say that Tim's JP's, Jess's, they're not an ass tattoo. That's a hip tattoo that kind of wraps a little on your ass. You don't meet the challenge, man, you lose. Yeah. I mean, I know that for a fact. Today, you are being tested on creativity, tattooing difficult body parts. Tim. What placement did your canvas ask for? Ass. I'm an ass man, and uh, that ain't no ass tat. That's straight up ass right there. This is my ass. Yep. Other than the placement, I love this tattoo. I love the line weight. I love the cleanliness of this tattoo. I like the use of the light blue in the tattoo to show that the horse is white. Do not yourself out of wins by not putting things where they're asked. That's an ass. That's the front of her leg. You're an ass. Jess. It has some nice detailing in the rose, nice shape, but a little light on creativity. Definitely a little light on being on the part of the body where it was supposed to be. You guys all know where the ass is on the body? Questionable. I would say you're definitely in the running for hoping somebody up more than you do. Falls a little short for me. JP. What was the placement? Placement was ass. That ain't no ass, dude. This is insane. It's a creative illustration, but it's a little tonal. It took me a minute to find the toad. I do feel that this is the strongest tattoo that I've given you guys so far. This is a vast improvement. But placing this on an area where you have all these stretch marks was really tough to get a smooth, consistent fade. When you're riding over this wobbly stuff, tighten it up. Today, you must push your creativity to the limit and create a new school food tattoo. What? What's gonna show off color theory more than a new school tattoo? They're super colorful, bright tattoos with a lot of dynamic shapes. I'm down to eat that up. We want something that's gonna be bold and graphic, but it's gonna give us a playful look at a food tattoo. Seriously? Let's meet your canvases. A New Orleans beignet with powdered sugar. What? A beignet? What the hell is that? Isn't that the thing that washes your butthole? Beignets don't really look like anything. Just like big crust. Tattoo powdered sugar, bro. That's easy. <gasps> Canvases, one by one, please read the artist's name on the bottom of your skull. Okay. Hi. A beignet is a brown pastry with white powdered sugar on it. And this is to show color theory. New School takes the element of what it is and then stretches it, warps it, adds faces to it, makes them into living characters. They're fun. Doing a crawfish? Yeah. What's it, what colors are they typically? Like reds. When you have something that's fun, it's like a child's toy, it should be bright and vibrant, and it should make you smile. I gotta play with color a little bit on this thing. Maybe some like blue light on the top of yeah. it, just a little bit. If these artists can't nail what piece of food we're looking at, then they've already lost. You wanted beignet? Yeah. All right. With um, powdered sugar? Okay. I'm worried about Kay and Jessa. Chicken and waffles. This is like one of my favorite foods. Oh, perfect. Um, both of the images are brown. There's not a lot of room for color play there. So this is a color challenge. Are you into me incorporating like a second flower with it? It's the curse of the golden skull. You get skull picks and you f it all up. How do I make it more weird, Jimmy? But you gotta make it exaggerated somehow. The cup of coffee should be cartoony. I learned how to draw a coffee mug so it looks like a coffee mug, and now I've gotta like bend it all over the place. And whenever I try to distort it, it just looks wrong. Like not cool, just bad. I feel like the more I draw this cup, the less I like it. Make it like shorter and fatter. Okay, so I should just redraw the whole thing. Don't, don't redraw the whole thing. All right. Don't stress out. It's just frustrating. Off we go on this cute little munchkin. I can't wait. Mm. So, it's a basic drawing. Oh, um, wow, so cute. Super bright colors. Yeah. Um, I actually don't like coffee. Okay. So, could you yeah. change it into like a jar of jam? Let me think about that. 
also, and I think this is like, I don't like coffee. Can you change that to a jar of jam? <laughs> what? Just right now? Yeah. New school is like the antithesis of what my natural style is. And I'm trying not to panic, but I'm just kind of losing it. I'm stressed out. I think if I had to get a food tattoo, I would get some sort of pasta. My tattoo was the chicken and waffles, but I've changed it to waffles and ice cream. At least I've got some color in there to make it pop. You could use some sort of glow, just like a lighter pink. No matter what, this waffle is gonna look really flat because it's almost the same color as her tan. And that sucks, dude. I didn't just leave my family and leave my shop to come here and get eliminated because I got given a waffle. For the love of God. Everybody's already started tattooing. I can't sit here for six hours and draw and redraw this. Like, I've got to get started. All right, ladies. All right. This is what we get for ya. Oh, my God. A little jam jar in That's there. That's so cute. I know that I'm not going to hit new school, but I don't know how to do it any better, so I better <laughs> slay color theory. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. I think he struggled the most. You can tell that they've never drawn anything cartoony. Oh. Jess says it's just applied bad and it's kind of drawn bad. K's is not new school. It basically looks like a K tattoo that she threw two extra colors in. I'm super happy with how bright it is and how clean it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like half in the color. They're so far off from new school. Today, you had to show color theory with a new school food tattoo. Let's see how you did. Jessa. As far as color theory here goes, there's no pop in this. It's flat, it's boring. The transition of magenta to pink, it looks like sidewalk chalk. For what it is, it should be blasted with color. And these colors really just play into your canvas's skin tone. You can do color palettes that are not the real color palette of the real thing. You just don't hit the mark on this one. Okay. What did you do in this that you thought was new school? Exaggerating the shape of the top flower and the shape of the jam jar. I don't think you made an outrageous shape of anything. It looks like a painterly life study. Today, you must create pixelated tattoos. Pixelated what? Damn. Is there an instruction booklet for pixel tattoos? I have no idea how to make one of those. A pixelated tattoo is taking an image and breaking that down into individual squares and individual colors. They take forever to do. Let's meet your canvases. Team DJ, you won the flash challenge. You now have the power to assign the human canvases. DJ, pick two artists from your team to talk to the canvases. I'm gonna pick Little D and Frank. Come on up. Do good, boys. Get them, boys. I would be worried if you were not on Team DJ. We're gonna find the weirdest canvases and give them to the biggest players on each of the teams. What would you like to get today? Uh, pixelated desktop computer with a 3D skull inside. Katie. That's me. Little D. That's me. Fame. All righty. Do the thing. Pixelated tattoos are a tough thing to pull off. These artists could get lost in their own interpretations. What do you think of that? Hell yeah. Killer. If you're not crystal clear on what you're supposed to deliver, you will definitely end up on the bottom and potentially go home. So you think I should leave the outside blocks open? If you think so, then do it. If you don't think so, don't do it. My canvas, his arm is all broken out because of razor burn. He shaved himself before he came to get tattooed. Don't be afraid to put black in. So it actually belongs there. Trying to make straight lines on top of razor burn is really difficult because you're going over bumps. It's just a disaster. Are you doing all solid black right there? No, this is black right now. My biggest issue right now with this tattoo is these pixels are looking like crossword puzzles. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I don't want to come from a tattoo today to go to the bottom. Working these fat lines. Just pretty grays mostly at the ends of the feathers. Okay. It's been rough for me to realize that after 24 years, I'm not as good as somebody that might have been tattooed for five, but I didn't have the same advantages as they did. And tattooing wasn't always about being artistic. It was about street credit. The white ones, you can keep a little closer. Like that one, white. Yeah. I try to stay humble. I'm gonna keep learning until I'm done tattooing, which I hope isn't for another 20 years. 
Today you had to show precision by creating pixelated tattoos. Let's see how you did. Fame. This thing is challenged throughout. You have these pixels in the background, but then you have the same exact tones in the pixels in front of this thing, which is really making it kind of difficult to read and understand why these pixels are there. Precision day. Pixels aside, the line work is busted. Nothing solid, nothing smooth, nothing saturated. This beat. Katie. Your challenge right out of the gate, just not doing the most simplest thing. A skull, realistic, black and gray, anybody that can't do that, just go start packing right now. The line work in this thing is rough. He had severe razor burn and he was gushing blood. If you look at the whole top of this outline of the computer, it is a bumpy ride. Lil D. It is very legible. The biggest thing about this for me is color saturation. All the red squares are not solid. The areas of outline that you have that butt up to the headdress, you can see all the wavering lines. This one's super challenged. Today, you had to create pixelated tattoos. And based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. Let's hear from the coaches. Why did you vote Katie to the bottom? It came down to trauma to the skin. It's way overworked. When I started to line, it immediately started to gush, and I was not able to get anything to stay. It boils down to how simple your tattoo is, and yet still how many problems there are with precision. There are no excuses here. I should have done better. The one thing I do know is this is not her work, because she's much better than this. I can do better line work than that. I have a little more experience than the rest of these guys. I have more tricks in my bag. This is one of the ones of the day that any of us would actually want on our body. I think it looks tough. Why is American traditional if it looks up? That's a tough tattoo. At 20 years, color's still not solid. This is the simplest tattoo in the room. This is exactly his style. You think this is more simple than Katie's? Yes, I do. He dropped the ball on it, again. For my tattoo, at least you can tell what the it is. And at the end of the day, I got more heart than any of these motherfuckers up here. I have heart too. I mean, that's the reason I'm here. As you can see from the last challenge, I got tattooed today. This tattoo is a technical application nightmare. The challenge got to me. You know I could do better than that. It sucks to go from the ultimate high to the bottom. Precision, you just don't hit. Judges, it is time to determine who is going home. I mean, it boils down to the technical application. I gotta go with Katie. I can read Katie's tattoo better than I can read Fame's. Stay in textbook. Katie. The judges have decided, Katie, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. We've seen you do better tattoos than this. It's just what happens on the day is what happens on the day. You should walk out of here proud. Head up, you're good. Thank you guys so much for giving me this opportunity. Please pack your machines and close shop. Thank you. Today, you must create cross-stitch tattoos. Mother I don't know what cross-stitch is. The, the little round frames you see in your grandmother's bathroom, it says dumb ass shit in it. With intricate patterns and hundreds of tiny, repetitive lines, consistency is crucial to make your design look like it's sewn into your canvas's skin. Wait, what? I love sewing other people's skin, so that's not a problem. It is grandma's patterns. What are you looking to get? Cross-stitch uh, T-Rex on my shin. Ooh. I don't know how you're gonna do a cross-stitch T-Rex. It has a lot of details, and if you don't hit it right, you're not gonna be able to tell what it is. I would like a colorful cross-stitch gothic fairy on my ribs up to my breast. We are for sure getting that. T-Rex. Ash in. Ash? It's not happening. He's not getting color, and he's not getting on his shin. He just doesn't know it yet. Jake. Okay, the rooms. This is someone they hate. Ashley? Hi. This is not going to be good. I can't believe I have an entire gothic fairy to knit on the roof. So you want... It is a goth fairy? Yeah. Yep. Invoking darkness. Um, yep. But a protector, you know, some sort of sword. Yep. Uh, I'd like her to have a corset on. The canvas wants so many elements in a cross-stitch pattern. How do I get all those tiny details? My mind, for the most part, goes to black and gray. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the talent it takes to do black and gray, but yep. I really prefer yep. color. 
And so you're thinking ribs? Yeah, like right where I'm, I have my hand. Dead set on that spot? Yes. I got royally screwed over by the men. Cross-hatching flames, I don't know how if they're gonna look like flames. I would put like an outline on it, yeah. fairly solid, and then I would cross-stitch, like depth. Oh, see, I flames. don't wanna do that. I am not no cross-hatch master. Five hours left, guys, five more hours. I just want to make sure it's legible. I'd rather not finish a tattoo than do a bad tattoo on you. I spent so much time drawing that I'm the last person to start tattooing. You ready? Yep. Either I'm going to have to make my tattoo look kind of sloppy to get it done, or potentially not finish it at all. I wonder if he did, like underneath where the grass is, like if he did like little cross stitches to kind of give you a little bit more cross stitching. Her one eye, is it? kind of a little wonky. I think she got punched in the eye. It's incredibly difficult to do faces, even on perfect skin, when they're this tiny. We're definitely gonna be growing in with more grays just to work on that. The fact that I'm having trouble with the skin also is just making it super difficult to render. I'm putting as little cross stitch as humanly possible. What else do I do to make it cross hatchy? Make it to be 60% cross stitch, 40% dinosaur. And so if that means kind of coming up the side and adding some to the side to kind of help give you more cross hatchings. I'm nervous about making a mistake with something that I really don't understand how to do it. I really care. Six to four again, I'm gonna be honest. Are some of your people just not grasping cross stitch? See. It looks like you delivered some badass like I asked for. Good. I like that. Thank you very Good. much. No problem. Dig it. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm worried. You sat like shit and had that old guy skin that flaked off every time I wiped it. Ugh, that's the worst. So like, right. the worst. This was a backfire. Jake's in trouble. Is he really? If that doesn't go home, I'm gonna be pissed. Today you had to prove your consistency by creating a cross stitch tattoo. Jake. Judging consistency, this tattoo is beat. Just that color that's put in the fire and the outline around the fire, not super tight, not super solid. The shading in the skull looks real choppy. And then these X's, man, are out of control. No pattern, no consistency, totally wild. Ashley. I know that the things in the background are supposed to be wings, but the top looks like some sort of cityscape, and her chest and midriff looks like some sort of weird digitized censoring. Her face is rough. The shading that you do in this, you really give her a black eye. Yeah, the face was super tiny, and that was really just difficult Who to do. Who drew it? I did. Correct. If you have a bad way about you going in, you're not ending well. Ash. Oh, damn it. Just get it over with. You all look really nice today. What was the outburst about? I think I just didn't necessarily understand the cross stitching. Fishnet mouth. That's not what the challenge was. If you're setting out to do a perfect black and gray tattoo and then tattoo a grid over it, so be it. But let them both be perfect. You have a lot of tonality. And doing these really long lines, when you pull those lines, the line next to it wavers. You have inconsistencies in both sides. I think I've sweat in places I didn't know you could sweat. So there's that. Today you're being tested on consistency. Based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. Duffy, why did the men's team vote Ash to the bottom? Ash had more issues with just like understanding the challenge. I tried my best. Once I started, I realized that maybe I should have been doing the X's, but it was already too late. So I just made a judgment call. If the lines in your tattoo were smooth, clean, straight, and solid, and the shading in your dinosaur was nice and beautiful and clean, you would not be in the bottom. That is not the case. I don't feel like it was super difficult, even with the T-Rex, to make that look cross-stitched with mine. I'd rather attempt to do the style that was asked for than not finish it at all. But what I see with this more than anything is the part that you tattooed as a comfortable, normal style of tattooing, which is the skull. It just gets away from you. And that, for me, is the bummer people that have tattooed strong, and because you get thrown something that you're not comfortable with, everything goes with it. 
This is not a, normally what any of my black and gray work looks like. I think just the overall request and what I had to work with was really difficult. The application is rough, the look is rough, the interpretation is off. I definitely tried my best with this. The X's that are in the fairy are a hell of a lot cleaner than what's in this bandana. The cross stitching in his hat or whatever it is in his chili pepper is jacked. There's no real X's that are in there. There's V's and there's single lines and what have you. To me, that's the one that is most legible. The safest. Yes. The one that's the most confusing to understand concept and design wise is Ashley. I also will be voting for Ashley. The judges have decided. Ashley, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Your canvas and this challenge really got the best of you. Thank you for the opportunity. Please pack your machines and close shop. Today, you must tattoo outer space. Dude, I'm totally freaking out. I've never tattooed space before, and there is no beginning or end to space in general. I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off. Outer space itself is the ultimate darkness, but objects in space are visible because they're either creating light or reflecting light. Without contrast between light and dark, your tattoo will be unrecognizable. Deep space is black and achieving contrast is really tough. You need to be really creative or it's going to be a blobby blur. I'm looking for a new school solar system, lower throat, chest. Lower throat where? Like So I could hide it with a dress shirt, just like uh, right about on the collarbone here. I better not get that. The guy will quit. I really don't want the chest. It's a hard place to tattoo. The skin inflames really, really easy. Gia. Knew it. Of course you would. You boys, man. You are dead to me. I know. What's your critique? Once I get all my white in. I think if you pull it into like a peachy yellow. Peachy yellow in there? For the highlight? Yeah. I am not that big a fan of Gia's idea. I think Gia bit off way more than she could chew. I'm worried about my technical skills in this tattoo because the chest is a tricky area to tattoo. You get a lot of inflammation. The skull picks are definitely screwing me over. Five, four, three, two, one. That is it. Time's up, machine's down. No more ink. It's great. I love the planet. It's perfect. Team Peck, today you had to show contrast by tattooing outer space. And Team Nunez, you will serve as the jury of peers. Gia, your canvas wanted a new school design? Yes. How did you guys arrive at this? I've never done space before, so I thought I was doing something that was out of the box. I like the digital concept. The tattooing is where it's rough. A lot of the precision, the really straight, strong, clean outlining that you need to make this design work is what you're missing. And not only do you have sketchy line work, you actually just see some of the squares aren't square, some of the lines don't line up. Chests are hard to tattoo, and I lost some of my stencil. If you can't do a clean tattoo every time, it's gonna hurt you. All right, where the jury appears, and we're here to decide who has the worst tattoo of the day. The Gia's tattoo, I feel like she missed the mark on basic stuff that shouldn't even be talked about. I feel the complete about. opposite. Can you really put Boneface next to Gia and say that he's a better tattooer? I love the idea and the concept of making it look really digital and pixelated, but when you do that, you shouldn't be able to see the lines in your squares, and if you do, they should at least be straight. But she is an artist, and she can fix her mistakes. Leaving the personal at home, my it first mind is just technical. It has to do with personal. The first thing is technical ability, and if G is no. lacking there, then that should be gone. At this point, none of us should have technical application problems. But none of us should be bad artists either. Today, you tattooed outer space. And based on your work, one of you will close shop. Team Nunez, why did you vote Gia to the bottom? Technical application. That was the main reason. We think it was a cool idea. She just didn't execute as well as she should have. 
this elimination tattoo, you must make your canvases super human by transforming them into cyborgs. Cyborg tattoos? I've been trying to avoid these for years. A cyborg has mechanical parts incorporated into their body to enhance their capabilities. Your canvases want gears, pistons, cogs, pulleys, and other mechanisms where joints and muscles would exist. Biomechanical tattoos are always really harsh and rigid, and I don't even know where to start on designs like this. And there's no better test of consistency than working with other artists on multiple tattoos. So once again, it's Team Peck versus Team Nunez. All the members of your team must tattoo your canvas at the same time. You're being judged as a team. That means you win as a team or you lose as a team. It's hard as hell to tattoo with somebody else tattooing next to you, much less two other people. It's gonna be a nightmare. But that's not all. Why would it be? Every hour, you must switch tattoos, proving your consistency by seamlessly picking up where the last artist left off. Oh man, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. All of us have very different styles, and Nate's line work sucks. If we don't show consistency in these tattoos, we're going to lose. We win together or lose together today. One of their guys is already in the finale by default. Yeah. So yeah. only two of you can make it. I want to make sure I make that. You know what I would love to see you guys do? One badass, huge rockin' image that's one big tattoo that goes over both. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. One big, bold, beautiful thing. Boom. Only having two tattooers today that have a very similar style is a definite advantage. I thought we would have a disadvantage because we're missing one person, but this is better. See these sections where the red breaks in? Yep. Just yep, free and fun. I'm on it. Think I'm okay even though I went down there? Yeah, just don't do them on the rest. Okay. I never do biomechanical, so I need to take every bit of advice Nunez gives me. He's making sure that we're as solid as possible. I think we're okay. And switch! I just did black, gray into red. Is that too dark? It is. I walked away and we had a game plan. I came back in. This thing's so <laughs> There is no biomechanical background and the exterior was supposed to look like metal plating. It turned into rocks. If this thing is just the skull with these broken rocks around it, these guys are gonna get torn apart. Artists, time to switch. Did I f it up? Just keep rocking. This is the least confident I've ever seen Nikki. If we make back here like the source of light, this being dark makes perfect sense. That'll be cool. I'm gonna start doing that. Okay. What's done is done. I just have to keep on track and make sure that she knows she's still doing a good job. No more ink. Woo! Oh, your mama. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, you okay? Mm, no. I really doubt this is gonna win. It's supposed to be like a cyborg. It doesn't look like metal, it looks like rocks. I went too dark on one part of the skull. The realization is setting in that my hard work is probably sending one of my girls home. Me and Kelly don't know how to do bio. We didn't go in the gear and mechanical direction either. I mean, it may look consistent all over. You're here to fight. You have to put up a good one. Today, you had to show consistency tattooing cyborg tattoos. Remember, you're being judged as a team. Let's see how you did. Team Nunez. I think it's a pretty good tattoo, but... I don't see any kind of mechanical, doesn't say cyborg to me. I would also say that I don't think that the forehead matches the rest of the skull. It looks really smooth and it doesn't have as much texture or dimension as the lower part of the face or the bottom jaw. That was a difficult tattoo. In all honesty, I truly believe that we gave her a good tattoo, but it might have gotten away from us. Gotten away from you how? Because the challenge was 
transform your canvas into a cyborg. That's probably what got away from us. When we take that, you know, we can go down the route of biomech, which we definitely did. It's, it's a little more bio-organic. Heavy on the bio. Light on the mech. First of all, this strategy to turn your canvas into a cyborg and you give her a skull in a cavernous setting, I could see maybe a little bit of bio, but I don't see even a drop of mech in this at all. So bio mech is out. I don't think the skull and the jawbone look consistent in any way. The bottom jaw looks like a totally separate thought that doesn't go along with the skull at all. And then you look at the side of the jaw that's closest to us, it's really thin. And the one in the background, it's super thick. It makes it hard for me to know that's a jaw. From a distance, it looks like just a red oil rag getting thrown down a cave. It was the most stressful tattoo I think either of us have done here. We have some issues. Behind the skull, we were supposed to have all that weird connective biomech tissue, but you missed doing those weird shapes that we talked about doing, and then coloring the same way you colored. That would have been fine, you would have had it. The problem is that we didn't hit the look of the metal, and we didn't hit the look of the biomech tissue behind the skull. The things we talked about got lost in translation. What I will say in terms of consistency here, it does look like one artist did both tattoos. The line weights are consistent, shading is consistent. I do see remnants of that biomechanical style with these rock formations that are coming out, so I see that as being a consistent element there. So there are consistent elements here, and that is one of the things we're testing for. For centuries, fishermen around the world have told legendary tales of a fictitious sea monster similar to the giant squid, the Kraken. According to legend, the Kraken wreaked havoc on tall ships and rum-running vessels and had violent battles with its natural enemies. Today, your canvases all want their own tattoo of the Kraken in battle on their hands. Hands? There's a long list of problems with hand tattoos. Some hands are gonna swell right away. You got veins, bones. There are totally different factors when it comes to hands. And you must work in teams of two, tattooing both of your canvas's hands at the same time. What? What? The Kraken must be in black and gray, while the enemy can be in any color. Marissa, nice to meet you. Okay, so, nice, Mike, nice, nice to meet you, bro. What are we fighting? Uh, snake. Snake. My canvas surprisingly wants a Kraken versus a snake. I like the idea of the fangs protruding coming out. I think it'd be good for me to do a snake. <laughs> I agree, yeah. I don't understand what's happening with the snake. Did you forget the teeth? I totally did not put teeth in it. I'm excited about this. It's a rock and roll. You're gonna do your tentacles last, right? Yep, okay. so I can see your... Yep. Dave is doing the sperm whale. It looks like a shoebox with an eyeball on it. It doesn't even look like a whale to me. I think it's a nice little playful whale. He's gonna make me look like a fool up there. All right, artists, it's time to critique your work. Earl and Duffy. From a few feet away, it's very difficult to tell what's going on. It was hard to find a happy medium with the background being that it's supposed to be like a dark scene. Darker blues on darker skin kills the contrast. Or as far as your snake, it's more of a fish. It's a big head and just a bunch of coils behind it. Damn, Earl, you need to stay away from these snakes. Go ahead and put it to rest. MV and Keto. We went with a dark water and then in contrast, the really bright orange for the background. I don't think it's that bright. It goes from a darker tone from this side up to a lighter tone on this side. I don't think it adds much contrast to his skin. Oh, we thought we hit it with the contrast. Cruzman and Dave. I like these tattoos. They're simple and bold. The thing that's just bugging me is the ending of the whale on the knuckles. The eye is outlined and finished out, but the shading stops higher than that. That's bugging me. My part looks awesome. I could strangle Dave Clark right now. He is 100% taking away the chance of me getting my first skull pick. Today, you'll be going head to head on the same canvas at the same time. What? Because you must create interlocking tattoos. What? This is crazy. I've never done anything like this. Each of you must tattoo one of your canvas's forearms. Not only must each forearm stand alone as a complete piece, but when your canvas's forearms are touching, both tattoos must seamlessly connect to create one larger, impressive image. What the hell? You have to adapt to the canvas's needs, adapt in the drawing styles, adapt in the fact that these have to form together. This is just a cluster 
of all kinds of adaptability. That's gonna be hard. Yeah. You have to work together. If you do not match, you are out. Let's meet your canvases. What are you looking to do? Two snakes that'll be one snake whenever you put the arms together. This snake tattoo is not gonna work. How does that turn into one tattoo here? One by one, please read the artist's name on the bottom of your skulls. Josh. Julia. Ooh. Eric thinks that he's screwing me over by putting me with Julia. I get to hang out with Julia all night. That's cool. But it's gonna be an easy win. One snake on each arm. Whenever I put four arms together, it'll wrap up. My canvas wants a interlocking tattoo of a snake, but because of the way he wants it, it's not reasonable to do. Do you have any other ideas? I'm gonna do something that works best for me and lead us into a situation that's gonna be beneficial for this tattoo. A like angel type thing on one side and then like a demon on the other. Yeah. Yeah, so fill that in a little bit more. What the hell is Mark trying to do? I completely change the background. I have to add more rows of clouds just so the tattoos match up again. I am pissed. What happened? Mark changed the background halfway through the tattoo. Well, go back in here, match it up. Have him hold him like that real quick. That's what we did, we just kept comparing him. Don's got a problem with his teammate. Why is he telling me? We're just throwing the towel and saying it. What's it gonna be, Don? Are we doing that little bit of the, the tip solid black or are we leaving it open? Mine's open. I know for a fact that I can beat out Aaron in this head-to-head. -head. I came here to beat my rival. Now is my opportunity to make sure that Aaron goes home. It's a done deal. So what do you want to do about background? I don't know yet, Emily. I not only have to work with my rival, but I have to beat her. Final hour, one hour to go, everybody. Double arm style. Let me style her and save me. You're doing dark hair, right? Dark hair, yeah. It's nerve wracking knowing I have to go head to head with Josh. He is a portrait artist, and I've only done a few portraits. Are you putting white highlights in yours? In a few places. He's just giving me a lot of positive reinforcement, and I feel really good about my tattoo. Hey, Josh. Yo. Do you want to peek at mine so far? Julia, do a tattoo on your own. Do not rely on me to guide you through it. Do you think she needs a highlight in her lips? Mm -hmm. You should know these things already on your own. And if you don't, then you should be eliminated. Today, you had to show adaptability by working with another artist to create interlocking tattoos. Josh and Julia, let's start with you. These two designs, when they are interlocked, they don't seem to go together as well as they could. I disagree. I felt like the angelic face, we wanted to keep very light and airy. Obviously, if you go dark, then it won't have that contrast where it looks like good and I evil. think that's where the adaptability part of this challenge would come in because the idea was to make it look as though it was one connecting, flowing piece. Julia. The detail is not very nice. The whole shape of her head, now this looks like a weird big toe. I traced it from the actual picture. Then why do the eyes look crooked? I don't know, I thought it looked really good when I did it. Look at the nose. She has no nose bone. If you're gonna shade a face, understand where the shading goes. Don't just wing it. Let's move along to Josh. Technically, it's really smooth, and I know it's supposed to be evil, but it is really dark. You got the robe, the skin, the hair, and the horns. At least one of those elements should be tonally different somehow. The other thing is the eyes aren't the same. Well, nobody's eyes are ever the same, so for me to make them perfect, Yeah, but there is no excuses. They're just the only highlights in the entire tattoo, so they stick out like a sore thumb. Final decision? Josh. 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 Congratulations, man. Thank you. Emily and Aaron. It's a tough artistic choice to show adaptability. It looks like this peacock looked into a mirror and is so hideous that it shattered the mirror. Let's move into Emily's tattoo. I love the head on this peacock. There's some nice detail happening in the face of this bird. If you're gonna put this much detail into the head, then why not the feathers? We were definitely going for a stylized look on it. You took a very grade school attempt at those. Aaron. If you're asked for a mirror and feathers, it has to be completely legible that did not happen. Emily's peacock is a peacock. It is legible. It was tough. It was tough coming up with the design and the layout. Maybe if you did a smaller mirror with a handle on it and wrap feathers around it and did a really ornate handle and do something beautiful, that is your game changer. Final decision. Because I immediately recognize what I'm looking at, I'm going with Emily's. I'm gonna go with Emily as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Mark and Don.
As far as how they match up as one whole tattoo, I wish the clouds met up at the top. But they're different types of clouds. Well, they shouldn't be. It should be the same clouds. That was actually a miscommunication. I went a more Japanese style with it, and he went a more traditional way. In terms of adaptability, I think ironing that kind of thing out would have been a key part of this team effort. Going into Don's tattoo, just outline alone, it's a lot cleaner than Mark's. If you look at your shading in the hull of the ship, it's nice, it's smooth. There's a good gradual fade from brown to light brown, yellow highlights in there. It's a strong looking tattoo. Mark. It's very scratchy. I know you can say that it's a beat up old pirate ship, but it's still just technically not really that smooth. I'm the opposite side of the fence. I like this thing. I like the little hidden scully and the torn up sail. The clouds, I really like the way you shaded them. I think it's strong. I like the little wispy purple that you put into the sails. It might not be perfect, but it's tough. Let's pull the judges for this head-to-head -head challenge. Going with Don. I'm sticking with Mark. I like the tough one. For just overall readability, I'm going with Don. Congratulations, man.